It's important to have goals and ambitions. As a matter of fact, success in life requires them. But life isn't always about getting to the next checkpoint. The demands of our daily schedules leave us preoccupied with demands, deadlines, situations, goals, and fears. We always want to get to work on time getting the promotion we seek, making and creating new businesses, and making ends meet. Now trust me when I say that life is hectic and complicated at times, but we need to take our time just a little bit and slow it down a little bit so we can have a much less stressful life. Now you don't need to bend the laws of physics to do that. What's more interesting about this and what's more important or equally important according to your mentality is how to attain spirituality in this materialistic world. Now, spirituality and materialism have one thing in common, is that both of them seek happiness. Yet in spirituality, happiness comes from within, whereas materialism, happiness comes without. Spirituality teaches how to desire and to have a better life, whereas materialism teaches us and teaches to desire to have a more materialistic life. Spirituality teaches us how to become selfless, whereas materialism teaches us how to become selfish. Now, what's the solution in overcoming this materialistic world at the same time attaining spirituality? The only solution to that is to deal with it. Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Deal With It with me, your host, Ahmad Ali. Now the show is dedicated towards discussing and analyzing some of the most controversial topics that affect our lives on a daily basis, whether in a negative or in a positive way. Throughout the show, you will be getting the chance to call, to comment, because we are live on Facebook, so you can leave your comments or your question below for Sayyid Hussein Qazmini is joining us tonight to discuss how to attain spirituality in this materialistic life and to answer whatever question you have. Sayyidina, Assalamu alaikum. alaikum wa rahmatullah. How are you doing? Alhamdulillah. You good? Very well. Allah khalikum. It's sahi. blessed to have you on these uh, on, on these nights, especially the beginning. I like the beginning when we send our salams to Al Hussein and to Al-Fadl Abbas. So, uh, the, the blessings and honor and pleasure is all mine. Allah khalikum. So Sayyidina, kick it off. Absolutely. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum ya Aba Abdullah wa ala al-arwah allati hallat bi fanaik. عليكم مني جميعا سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى أولاد الحسين وعلى أصحاب الحسين والسلام على أخيه أبي الفضل العباس قمر العشيرة وباب الحوائج السلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته Respected viewers, once again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We do welcome you to another episode of Deal With It with me, your host, Ahmed Ali. Now, for the dear viewers who are just tuning in for the first time, Deal With It is a show dedicated towards analyzing and discussing some of the most controversial topics that affect our life on a daily basis, whether in a positive or in a negative way. In the previous episode, in the first episode, we talked about dangers of social media. Then, in the second episode, we talked about early marriage. In yesterday's episode, we talked about how to deal with Islamophobia. And today, Sayyid Hassan Qazmini, who has joined us once again, decided to talk about how to attain spirituality 
in this materialistic world. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidina. Alaikum assalam How are you? Alhamdulillah. Allah khaliyukum inshaAllah. Inshallah. It's good to have you once again. It's good to be back. Allah uh, Now, this topic is very controversial because a lot of people see various ways into a, 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 attaining spirituality uh, through either uh, training or their own habits, uh, their own ways that they came up with or people previous came up with uh, to attaining spirituality. Now, according to you, if you think that you have something in mind for the dear viewers, if you have something in mind that you might have felt like your spirituality was enlightened, do leave that in the comment box below and we'll mention that throughout the show as well. Uh, Sayyidina, now, uh, we see a lot of people, as I mentioned, use various methods in achieving and or attaining spirituality. Do we human beings need spirituality? A'udhu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim, bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammadin wa alihi tayyibina tahirin. Allahumma sallam. In the West, I think the demand for spirituality is growing day by day. Mm -hmm. It's ironic because Western countries are the most advanced countries. Yes. They're the most powerful countries. They have technology, they have electricity, they have the best universities, they have the best homes. Yeah. You know, they're not a third world country Without a doubt. like uh, Iraq or countries where people have to worry about the most mundane, simple things like electricity. Water. I'm sorry? Water. Water. Clean water, good schools. You know, when you're a parent here, one of the things that you worry about the most is, is going to a good school, have, finding a good school for your kids. In the West, when it comes to technology, when it comes to materialism, things are perfect. But still, people have, find a gap yeah. in their life. There's still a problem. There's still a problem. Proof of that is the rates of suicide. Look at the rates of suicide. The biggest rates of suicide are in Europe, in the Scandinavian countries, like the Denmark, like Denmark, and the United States, even Russia. Russia is not a third world country; it's an advanced country. The United States is a well, advanced the most country. Countries, yeah. It's a developed country. But why is it that suicide is? skyrocketing in these countries this is one surprising two depression yeah depression is the leading illness in the united states of america the number one medicine on demand at most pharmacies the the medicine that is produced the most by pharmaceutical companies in the west and specifically in the united states of america antidepressants. are antidepressants well w what's going on you have a nice car you have a nice house. It's the, it's the land of opportunity. You could be whatever you want to be. You could be an athlete. You could be an astronaut. You could be a scientist. What's stopping you? Why would you want to commit suicide? Why would you go through depression? Why would you want to take medicine like Xantax and other antidepressants? There's something wrong in the equation. This is one, or this is two rather. Three. The most books on demand now are self-help books and books of spirituality. Go to famous uh, booksellers in, in America, Canada, Barnes & Noble. I don't know, do you have that in Canada? In America, it's very well known, mm -hmm. Barnes & Noble. Uh, or Borders, yeah. that's a well-known bookseller. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a general bookstore, not, yeah. not the specialized bookstore like if you want a book on uh, advanced biology you wouldn't go there it's yeah. a it's a for me i just go to the university's library yeah i don't really go to That's it. or bookstores. you buy from amazon yeah. but if you just want to see regular books you go to barnes and noble and borders you see the books that are most on demand are spirituality books on spirituality mm -hmm. how to enhance your spirituality yoga is on demand meditation some people, uh, you know, they resort to med meditation. What's interesting is one of the books that is most on demand is Jalal al-Din's, Jalal al-Din Rumi's Al-Mathnawi, or Al-Mathnawi. 
translated into English. Mm -hmm. Poetry, mystic poetry. I'm talking about Americans, non-Muslims, reading Rumi's books on mysticism and uh, tasawwuf and all that. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not trying to, I'm not saying that that's a good thing. I'm not trying to support Jalal al-Din Rumi's yeah. books or anything. No, but this is a phenomenon that in the West, there's a growing need for spirituality. Yeah. What's, what's the problem? Why, why do we see this? Number one, going back to your question, do we need spirituality? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Spirituality comes from spirit. Spirituality. We human beings are bodies and spirit. Our bodies are one, one of our components. The other component is our spirit, is mm -hmm. our nafs. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says regarding Adam that after he created him, فَنَفَخْتُ فِيهِمْ ruhi, Making Adam with clay, that was his physical side. That was his physical dimension. He had, he, had, he had a spiritual dimension as well. When Allah blew into Adam from his spirit. Of course, this is a metaphorical. Yes. It's not literal. It's not supposed to be taken literally that Allah blows. Allah yeah. doesn't blow. Allah is not a human to blow. But basically Allah is saying that Adam had a physical component and he has a spiritual component. Mm -hmm. We human beings, we usually take care of our physical component. Mm -hmm. We eat the best food, mm -hmm. we drink the best drink, we wear the nicest clothing, mm -hmm. we sleep, we relax, we take care of our bodies. Yeah. But what about the spirit? Just like the body needs nourishment, it needs pampering, so to speak. It needs to be pampered and taken yeah. care of and spoiled. The spirit too. You can't, you know, feed your body and keep your spirit starving. Mm -hmm. And that's why we need spirituality. Mm -hmm. Spirituality is soul food. Mm -hmm. it's food. It's food for the spirit. Yes. Now, can you mix them together? Yani, for example, can you have materialism and spirituality together? Like for example, since you brought Prophet Adam, uh, yeah, Prophet Adam, uh, we have Dawood alayhi salam who is known for, for being rich. Sulaiman who was known for being rich. And they were kings, yet they were prophets. Mm. So they, they somehow stabilized the materialistic right. and, and their spiritual life right. and put them together. Right. Uh, I would not call them materialistic. Well, they, they, they spiritual, were they were spiritual. And, and they, 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 they were rich. They were kings. They owned. Oh, the what is materialism? Materialism is not to own. It doesn't mean to own things. Well, to or love be rich. materialistic things. Materialism is to be owned by things. It's to be rich. You possess a car, a house, wealth, and you allow those things to own you. That is materialism. Someone who's materialistic is a person who only cares about making money, who wants to be filthy rich, and you know, spend so much money on him and he's overprotective of his wealth, this person is actually letting his wealth own him. He doesn't own his wealth. Mm -hmm. All he cares is about his investments. He wants to make the mil $10 million, he wants to make it 15 million. The 15 million, he wants to make it 20 million. But that's ambition. This is materialism. That's ambition. You, you, you have to have ambition in life. That's fine. Own money. In fact, Islam doesn't say don't own money. Islam says good. A man came to Maybe Imam Sadiq, one of the Imams. He came to him, he told him, Ya Rasulullah, I have a desire to make money. Is that a bad thing? Mm -hmm. The Imam told him, why do you want to make money? He said, because I want to spend on my wife. I want to spend on my children. I don't want my children to be poor. I want to spend on my parents. I want to spend on my neighbors. I want to build a mosque. I want to do good deeds. He said, then you don't want to... He said, Imam Sadiq told him that then you want money for akhirah, not for dunya. Mm -hmm. You have nothing to worry about. This is not materialism. This is a good thing. Wanting money to spend it on your family, on your relatives, on the poor, building a mosque, opening a satellite channel, helping out a hospital, opening a clinic, an orphanage. This is akhirah. These are good things for akhirah. This is not for dunya. Materialism is building up an empire of cash, Stacking up money, not helping anyone. So greed. Greed. You only think of yourself and yourself only. You don't help anyone. You buy homes, palaces, food of all kind. That's materialism. That doesn't go along with spirituality. 
That's the materialism mm -hmm. that doesn't go along with spirituality. You could own things, but don't let them own you. Yeah, and for example, when you say don't let them own you, can you give us an example? Yeah, and if a person has a car, a very expensive car. I'll talk. I'll, I'll yeah. You have how, a very how, expensive how, car. How is that supposed to I'll give you an example. you or a house? I'll, I'll give you an example. You own a very expensive car. Uh -huh. You own the car. The car takes you to places. It takes you to work. It takes you to school. Uh, you go to the beach for relaxation. You own the car because mm -hmm. it's serving you. Yeah. But if it, it gets a scratch, if there's a scratch on the car and you blow up and you get in a fight with the one who got a scratch on a your car. range monster. Here, the car owned you. Because is the purpose of the car to serve you or you serve the car? Here, you're serving the car. That means the car owned you. Saying that, can I? If you blow up and get upset over a minor crash or a dent or a scratch on the car and you're willing to cause a fight and, and throw out a fit, that means the car is owning you. You're serving the car Sayyidna. while it should be owning you. Uh -huh. uh, while you should be owning it. Owning it. Sayyidina, now, if, if, yeah, when we're talking expensive, we talk about cars, the, the high-end cars, you know, 40 grand up. Those are considered high-end. Some don't consider it high-end, but for me, I think high-end cars, not Lamborghinis and stuff, but high-end cars, where each part, if you want to, if there's a small dent, if you want to change the part, it's, it's expensive. Right. So I'm, I'm going to waste money for a person's mistake. No, you're not wasting money. It's, it's about a mentality. It's about not, not a big deal. Or I'll give you an exa another example. You're willing to give that car to someone else. You're willing to give that car to someone else. Someone who's in need. I'm not talking about a Lamborghini. Yeah. But a, your car that you own and you yeah. like, right? But if someone was in need and needed a car, you'll give them that car. That means you don't have uh, an emotional attachment with that car, mm -hmm. with that house, with the money. You have $1,000 in your pocket. You're walking in a mosque, there's a fundraising, there's fundraising going on. You take out that money and you throw it. You own that money. That money doesn't own you. But if you say, no, 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 I worked hard for this money. There's no way I'm giving it to these crooks. And I don't even know how they're going to... That's shaitan telling you that's that money owning you. Mm -hmm. You're serving that money. That is why Imam Ali alayhi salam, he tells Kumail, he says, Ya Kumail, Al ilm khayrun min al mal. Al mal yahrusuk. Yahrusuka. Al ilm yahrusuka. Wa anta tahrusu al mal. Because yeah. knowledge is better than wealth. Knowledge protects you, gives you insight. It protects you. But you protect wealth. Indeed, all we care about investments. Where's the best bank? where my money is protected. Should I put it here? Should I put it in Switzerland? Where is my money protected? Well, it should be the other way around. This is materialism. So going back to spirituality. You could be spiritual mm -hmm. if you, even if you own the world. But you don't let the world own you. You could own 50 homes, but they don't own you. You'll, you'll give them up in a second. That means there's no emotional attachment. Sayyidina, you're yani, willing to leave this life and go without difficulty? You're a spiritual person. You're saying something impossible no. to many. Why? Yani if, for example, if you own a company and at once yani if someone came and told you if you want spirituality, leave it. Unless that individual has some, I've kind, seen of, people. some kind of strong will I've seen people. for a person to leave his work. Yeah, the, the only source of him getting money and to go somewhere on a spiritual journey. I've seen people in America, in Canada, other places. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given them from Allah. Yeah. He's, he's bestowed upon them from his riches. And they give. They give as if they don't fear tomorrow, as if there's yeah. no tomorrow. Sayyidina, give. They give to give orphans, up. they give to charities, projects. If you look at the amount that they give, you say this person thinks he's dying tomorrow. This is the amount of faith that they have. Money means nothing to them. They own the money. This person is spiritual. This person is not controlled by money or by business or by wealth. He's letting his business serve him. He's not serving his business. He's building for his akhirah. He's making an investment for his akhirah. This person is spiritual to me. Right? 
spirituality, this is how I see spirituality. Spirituality is a form of connection with Allah, is a form of relationship with Allah that doesn't let anything interfere. It's, you could call it romance, religious romance. A romantic relationship with Allah Azza wa that nothing can come in between. Not your car, not your business, not shaitan, nothing. You could be living in Paris. You could be living in London. You could be living in the nicest cities in America, in the nicest mansions. But at midnight, you'll get up for Salat al -Layl, and nothing could distract you. And you'll get up and pray Salat al -Layl. You go to work, you know, you're a CEO of a major company, but during the day, your mind is with Allah Azza wa Your tongue does not forget Allah. وَجْعَلْ لِسَانِي بِذِكْرِكَ لَهِجَةً وَقَلْبِي بِحُبِّكَ مُتَيَّمًا In Dua Kumail. This person is spiritual. You know, a lot of people, they say you're so lucky. You're living in Karbala, next to Imam Hussein, next to Abil Fadl Abbas in this beautiful place. You're so lucky to be in such a spiritual place. We're here in America, so far. It takes, if we wanted to come, it will take us two days to get here. We're, we could only come once a year or maybe once every two years. And, you're so lucky. Yeah. I tell them, listen, I'm lucky for what? For spirituality? You could be spiritual. It's not about the place. Some people assume that spirituality is restricted to Karbala, Najaf, Kalvamain, Mecca, Medina, Mashhad Qum, the religious sites. Where there's what, a religious site, thing? where there's a shrine, they're connected with Allah. They're spiritually connected. But as soon as they go back, they can no longer be connected. Why? Is Allah only in Karbala? He's not in... Uh, well, it's different, Sayyidina. You know, I know the, a family the, the that live in Las Vegas. The Let me just tell you this. The you. Absolutely. The atmosphere motivates you. I'll, I'll tell you. We'll, we'll, maybe we'll talk about that in the, in the second portion mm -hmm. of our show when we talk about how to become spiritual, right? Right now, we're just defining spirituality. Yeah. The next segment is how to reach spirituality. Yeah. I know a family in Las Vegas, a family, Iraqi family, that live in Las Vegas, Sin City. It doesn't get worse than that, worse than Sin City. This family, this Iraqi family, started a mosque, started a community. Wow. They got together with other Shi'i families. They became 5, 6, 10, 20. They started their own mosque in the heart of Las Vegas. Of course, maybe some might think, well, what are they doing living in Las Vegas? Las Vegas is a huge city. It's it not is. just about yeah. casinos and drinking yeah. and all that. No, it's a, it's a huge city. There's a lot that you could do for, as a means of living, I mean. Um, this family lives there and they're so pious. They're so pious. The mother, the wife in the family, she was diagnosed with cancer. But she didn't show any sign of, you know, you know, there's some people when, when bad things happen to them, they say, why me? Yeah. God is unjust. Why couldn't you have chosen someone else? Why does this have to? This lady surrendered completely to Allah. Allah wants me to go, I'll go. And prior to her death, they called and they asked, is there a female that can, can we contact a female uh, when the time comes for her to come and wash my body for proper burial? Imagine, there's some people that don't want to talk about these things. They don't want to think about being yeah. washed and shrouded and buried and all. No, this lady with complete faith in Allah. Yes. Is there any lady that can fly to Las Vegas to wash me? Subhanallah. Does it, get, does it get more severe than that? You're yeah. sitting in Las Vegas physically, but your mind and your heart spiritually connected. Spiritually, you're with Allah. Yes. Well. These things don't fool you. The casinos, the drinking, the parties, the, the nice hotels, none of them. Because you're with Allah here inside. This is spirituality. That you're connected with Allah. That you're not fooled with this dunya. This dunya is, is temporary. It's like, 
you know, um, you go to a city for a conference for two, three days, and they put you in a nice hotel. You're like, wow, this is an amazing hotel. The best furniture, nice screen TV, the bed is so comfortable. But you don't form an attachment, right? Because you know that within two, three days, you're going to have to leave this hotel room. It's not yours. Someone else is going to come into that room. And after two days, that person has to leave and someone else has to come into that. You don't form an attachment with a hotel room. You don't make investments. You don't go and buy furniture for that hotel room because you're going to be leaving it for someone else. It'd be ridiculous. Some people live in this dunya like that. They consider this dunya as a hotel room. People come and go, come and go. What you work for and you look forward to is your real home. Home sweet home. It's the real home. This is fake. This is temporary. It's like a hotel. It's like a rental car. Do you really enjoy a rental car? Sometimes you do if you're driving. You, you enjoy a rental car, but you don't form an attachment. When you give it back, you don't start crying. Say the, let, let us continue that because uh, examples are, you know, piling up. Let's continue that but after the short break, inshallah. Absolutely. Respective viewers, do stay tuned for after the break for inshallah. Continue to touch upon how we can uh, abstain from materialism and attach ourselves to spirituality. That's after the break. So stay tuned. تپش قلبم زربان من امروز و فردا یا حسین با تو چه معنوس دلم اسم تو حل مشکلم نمک عشق تو رو از اول فاطمه ریخته تو گلم حسین زمزمه عشق حسین رمزمه عشق حسین خاتمه عشق آقا حسین آقا حسین حسین بارون چشمام حسین خون تو رگ هام حسین همونی که میخوام آقا حسین آقا حسین رو لب و زنوزم آقا 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 حسین نفس فاطمه آقا 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 حسین تپش قلبم آقا 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 حسین رو لب و زنوزم آقا 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 حسین نفس فاطمه تپش قلبم آقا آقا بدو رو لبا زم زم آقا 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 موسی نفس فاطمه تپش قلبم آقا 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 موسی ای دین و دنیا میا حسین سرود لبها میا حسین ای دین و دنیا میا حسین سرود لبها میا حسین تپش قلبم زربان من امروز و فردا میا حسین با تو چه منوس دلم اسم تو حل مشکلم نمک عشق تو رو از اول فاطمه ریخته تو گلم حسین زمزمه عشق حسین رمزمه عشق حسین خاتمه عشق آقا حسین حسین بارون چشمامه حسین خونه تو رگه ها once again Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome to the second part of today's episode Now before the break uh, We have We did talk about uh, How to abstain from Materialistic goods And To Attach ourselves Not abstain not abstain. Okay, then. I didn't say, you know, abstain from materialistic goods. Buy whatever you want, eat whatever you want, live in whatever you want. Mm -hmm. But don't form an attachment. Don't form an attachment. Live in the nicest house that you want. But don't form an attachment. Mm -hmm. So that when you're told you have to go, you'll say, you know, Ma'asalama, I'm willing to go. That, no, no, no. You don't have mm -hmm. to abstain from anything. And I think this is the... the but the, don't the, form an attachment. This is the exact definition of zuhd. We have zuhd in, in, in Arabic. Ahsent. 
Ascent. This is uh, what that means. Uh, but Sayyidina, uh, we did tell uh, the dear viewers to, to message us or to send us uh, their comments. We are now, uh, we are live on Facebook. Uh, earlier there was a technical problem, so live on Facebook was down. Uh, but now we are live on Facebook. Um, now, some people are saying, that they, they mentioned uh, their type of ways on how they can achieve uh, spirituality or attain spirituality. Uh, some said meditation and fasting, mm. uh, their way of uh, attaining good, spirituality. Good question. good question. So how do we attain spirituality? Mm -hmm. This is a common question and I get this all the time. Sayyid, I want to feel spiritual. Teach me something. Teach me, what should I do? Is there a special dua? Is there a special surah that I have to read? Mm -hmm. Uh, is there a special exercise that I have to read? Do I have to go walking in the woods? Uh, should I go walk in a cemetery, graveyard? You know, some people would go and sleep in a grave to feel spiritual. What is it that I need to do? You know, a lot of scholars have been asked this question. And their, quest and their answer is simple. Do what you have to do. Don't do the things that you can't do. It's not more than that. Spirit, don't think of spirituality as a special exercise that you have to do to get closer to Allah Azza wa No. Let me ask you, you know, the ones that say this, that want a special exercise or a special supplication, I don't even know if they pray or not. Or how, how, yes. how seriously do they take their salah? Yes. Start with your salah. Start with your hijab. Start with your fasting. Start with your khums. Do the things that you have to do. And then think of, you know, do I have to do a spiritual exercise? No, you don't. Don't do that what is haram. Don't listen to ghiba. Even if you're tempted, don't say ghiba. Don't lie, don't cheat, don't look at, at that which is haram. Don't listen to that which is haram. It's the basic things. There's some people, you know, they delay their hours three, three hours late. They delay their salah three hours late. Mm -hmm. Their hijab is a convertible hijab. Makeup. They don't pay khums. They What's don't even know what khums is. Hijab the convertible hijab, the one that comes on and off. Ah, oh, nice. Depends on the weather. <laughs> or if it's the... shiny, comes off. If it's rainy, comes back on. <laughs> umbrella, umbrella. Kind of like an umbrella. It's convertible. Ah, uh -huh. nice. Uh, you know, these people have no knowledge of religion. But they want spirituality. Say, teach me something about spirituality. How can I come closer to Allah? Start with the basics. Come to your salah. Pray your salah on time. Don't rush into your salah. Take your time with salah just like you take your time with food. How long does dinner take to enjoy your dinner with, with family? Some people take an hour. Start with an appetizer and then food and then dessert. You said, a good hour on a dinner table. Would you take five minutes? No. But with salah, they don't mind rushing for two minutes. Within salah. Take your time in salah. This is a conversation between you and Allah. Make use of it. Pray on time. Go have a special praise for salah. You know, you were saying, right, when we're talking about Vegas, mm -hmm. that the place matters, right? The environment, the spiritual environment matters. Create that environment. Create the spiritual environment for yourself. Let me give an example. I like giving examples. Mm -hmm. It's like romance. Married couple, mm -hmm. when they're engaged, romance is... At, at its best. Yeah, you give it a 10. They get married, honeymoon, Nine. 10. Oh. After oh, the good. wedding, after the honeymoon, Nine and a half. Mm. After a couple of months, nine, eight, seven. Kind of like Donald Trump's approval ratings. <laughs> right? <laughs> Starts going down, going down, going down. Then there's pregnancy. Then there's having children. Yeah. Then there's fights. Then there's the mother-in-law getting involved. All of that reduces what? The romance. But so what do you have to do? This is what do you have to do? Yeah. You have to create romance. Yeah. You have three children, four children. They kill romance. They don't let you sleep. The mother's always tired. She's always cleaning. There's no, 
they have to create romance. You put a Friday night, there's a romance lesson. Mm -hmm. Like Friday night, you put the kids to sleep early, candlelight dinner, you bring Italian or French, right? Not chilo kebab or anything like that. That's not romantic. See, I, I, right? I like you that. Create, you, know, it's, it's you create romance, the environment. Romantic tips from Sayyid Qazwini, yes. You have to create a spiritual environment as well. Start by cutting off music. You can't feel spiritual if Romantic there's music, music playing up. You can't feel spiritual if there's women at your house not wearing hijab and there's men and women mixing and they're joking and they're chatting. That kills spirituality. Just like there are things that kill romance, like all of a sudden one of them snaps and they get angry, that kills a romantic moment. There are things that kill spirituality, like music. Or men and women mixing, or terrible hijab, that kills. You have to create a spiritual environment. Keep a special place for you to pray at home. There's no music. Shunan the Quran. Fasting helps. If you don't want to go outside to see bad scenes on the street, don't go out. You create that environment. You read a little bit of Quran, you listen to dua. You know, now we're in, we're, we just finished the month of Rajab, we're in the month of Sha'ban, Ramadan is coming up. These are perfect times to create spirituality. And we're, today we're celebrating the birthday of whom? Muhammad Sajjad Ali. Muhammad Zain al Abidin the master of spirituality. Yeah. Al Munajat al Sajjadiyya. Yeah. His famous 15 Munajat. Let's read them. Imagine what they do. You know, some guys, if they want to pick up on a lady, they use mm. pickup lines. Because Allah give us some Sayyidina. That, that is for another time. I'll show you guys some. That's for another time. We can probably keep it for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Just one or two. There is Islamic pickup lines. Okay, well, one or two. Quick. Yeah, he, he said. So we can you know, increase spirituality. Yeah, he said, uh, the first time I saw you, I said, MashaAllah. Cool. And then I said, Inshallah. It works. They That's say it nice. works. There's pickup lines. There's things to say to create that romantic situation. Imam Zina Abidin has munajat. Mm. His munajat, they create that spiritual environment. Mm -hmm. so now, is beautiful. the mashallah, inshallah, within the munajat or not? No, they're not. Oh, okay, good. There are other things. Okay. Right, you have to create the spiritual environment. You don't necessarily need to be in Karbala. You don't necessarily need to be in these places. These places, definitely there's spirituality. Mm -hmm. If you come here and you don't find spirituality, there's something wrong with you. Yeah. It's like going to a restaurant and you're still not full. You go to a restaurant and you come out and you're still hungry. There's something wrong with you. And you've eaten and you're mm -hmm. still hungry. That means there's something wrong with you. You come here to Karbala and you're still not spiritually satisfied. That means there's something wrong with you. Yes. No. The challenge is not to be in Karbala, not to be in Najaf, not to be in Mecca or Medina, not to be in Umrah and Hajj, yet still feel spiritual. Mm -hmm. You're walking in the streets of London or, or Los Angeles or New York City in, in the middle of Manhattan where there's businesses, huge corporations, but your mind is with Allah. Mm -hmm. You're not fooled. You're making a living. You're a CEO. But you know this is temporary. Yeah. This is a bridge. And one day you'll leave it. Mm -hmm. now this Whether is you like it or not. This is exactly what Hussein Adi from Australia said. He says, do I have to come for ziyarah every year as uh, we are told by scholars or can I be spiritually enlightened from home? You could be spiritually So there you go. If you'd like to come for ziyarah, you're more than welcome and you'll mm -hmm. be rewarded. And that's good for you. But is spirituality only in Karbala and nowhere else? No. That wouldn't even be fair because these cities are limited and Allah is everywhere. Allah wants people to be connected with Him all around the globe. Mm -hmm. He didn't create spirituality only for the people in enshrined cities. No, for everywhere. Mm -hmm. Right, you could be living anywhere mm -hmm. but you're spiritually connected to Allah Azza wa Jal. That's all it takes. Mm -hmm. That's all it takes. To know that you're here temporarily and that you will live you will leave one day and you leave everything behind 
That's spirituality. Mm -hmm. Now, Zaina Farah uh, says, uh, prayer, yoga, and martial arts help me uh, a lot when I feel spiritually down. Good. So these... If that works for you, that's good. If that works... Okay, that's good. Perfect. It's mm -hmm. not haram. There's nothing... In fact, meditation... What is meditation? Meditation is to sit... Clearing up your mind. Clearing up your mind and to think. Yeah. Islam promotes this. Yeah. Wow. To think for one hour, to think is meditation. Sit and meditate. Think about Allah. Think about why He created you. What's our, what, what is our purpose mm -hmm. in this life? Where am I headed in life? Where am I going? Am I going in the right path? Is Allah pleased with me? Mm -hmm. Should I continue doing what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Or should I change my life? Think for one hour, believe me, it's better than standing up for salah, one salah after the other, like a robot. But, but it's, a, it's a spiritless salah. Mm -hmm. It's a physical act, but your mind is somewhere else. Yes. You don't enjoy it. Islam is not against meditation. Yes. In fact, that's one of the ways of spirituality, is to sit and think. Tafakkuru sa'a. Those who remember Allah standing and sitting and even while lying down. Those who sit, they look at the stars, they look at the moon, they look at the sun and they say, My Lord, you didn't create these things out of vain and without a purpose and without a reason. I'm only a small part of your plan. Mm -hmm. And you have a huger plan, a bigger plan, mm -hmm. much bigger than me. Yes. I'm, I'm a small player in that small plan. Small entity. That's meditation. Yes. That's spirituality. That's connecting to Allah. Mm -hmm. Great. Now, we have a comment from Canada, uh, from David. He says, before I converted to Islam, uh, I was an atheist. And the reason why, behind why I converted was because I had a near-death experience which made me realize that there was a being out there that there is a being out there who's watching over and protecting me from that point on I felt spiritually mm. uplifted mm. and began to search for the being that saved me and after a year of looking and visiting different religious centers such as churches to synagogues and mosques I came across a Muslim family who really showed me how I can become a spiritual being and from that point on, my heart was finally at ease. Sorry for taking too long. Uh, beautiful. I mean, beautiful, it's, it's beautiful. beautiful. Um, Near-death uh, experiences really do lift up. They change, yeah. yeah. Near-death experiences where you feel this is it. I was about to leave. Yeah. I saw the tunnel and the white light and the light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah. Right? That's how they imagine it. But all of a sudden, I came back. Have you been through that, Sayyidina? No. I've been through that. Really? In, in Canada, I was in a car accident. And honestly, I was out for, for, for a good five minutes. I don't know what, what happened. When they woke me up, I was in a car crash. SubhanAllah. But, you know, the car flipped three times. Ajib. It was It was crazy. SubhanAllah. And, you know, I, I woke up, nothing wrong. Then I realized that, you know, something did change. A lot changed in my life. And, you know... Things do happen. I know what he's talking about. And then I mean? In addition to the Medica Medicare and all that? Uh, what is mean? that what changed or spiritually? You mean? No, 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 no. Spiritually. Spiritually changed. I'm joking with you. Uh, I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, but you know what I mean? Like what he's saying. Um, for, for us as Muslims, I think, um, if we are spiritually uplifted, then it's because we're Muslim. But for this individual who really converts after, you know, that that's a spiritual jump. That's a huge hop. That's beautiful. That's you know, beautiful. for someone so to, someone to come saved out of that. him and he wanted to discover who the savior is. Yes. But with and, the, and why did he save him? Yeah. It's definitely for a purpose. Yeah. He could have gone. He could have left. But God put him back into this life for a purpose and he wanted to discover that purpose. That's beautiful. And you know, he should thank Allah for giving him that opportunity and for allowing him to benefit from that opportunity. Yeah. There's so many people that, that have near-death experiences. They don't care. And they don't care. Yeah. They go back to yeah. 
go back to their old ways to mm -hmm. getting drunk and you know the, the regular life mm -hmm. uh, for, this person should thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm -hmm. for giving him this opportunity and for for giving him the, for giving him you know the tawfiq the opportunities to make to you know seize the opportunity mm -hmm. because not everyone seizes a lot of people have the opportunity but they don't see it mm -hmm. um, but not everyone has a near death experience right you don't necessarily need to have a near death experience to feel to spiritual up, yeah. but no. sometimes people need that wake up call and that wake up call is you know inshallah no one needs that but for some people they're so deep into this you know in, in, into the mess up of this Ahmed, world we do have wake up calls we do have wake up calls every day we hear of this person has cancer yes that person got in a car yeah. accident the car flipped on this these are wake up calls yeah. these are wake up calls when i hear of someone who's diagnosed with cancer immediately i say astaghfirullah my, my god forgive me because it could be me just like that person was diagnosed with cancer it could be me i'm not immune it could be anyone when i hear of someone got in a car accident immediately i seek forgiveness for my sin because i don't know when's my time yeah that's a wake-up call it's a it's a daily reminder mm -hmm. here in karbala you know one of the things that we see in the haram are uh, dead bodies yeah Do we, we bring just, them we for right funeral now. for burial we see them every day and it's a reminder some people don't see that but they do hear of a person diagnosed with cancer a person who got in a car accident either they came close to death or they're dying this is a wake-up call yeah a wake-up call a reminder that we're not going to be here forever mm -hmm. and life has a greater goal we should be working for that greater goal mm -hmm. for another life we have a greater purpose it's not just about me and satisfying my desires and my needs and my materialistic needs it's about being good to others leaving marks positive marks on people's lives yeah that when we leave they say they'll actually miss us mm -hmm. unfortunately there's some people here if they leave no one no one will miss them mm -hmm. no. they will not be missed hopefully we'll be among those who will be missed hopefully we'll be. inshallah inshallah, inshallah. Uh, Sayyidina now th this is one of the final questions there's two um, it's, it's somewhat unnecessary but you know he wants us to, to clear something up he says my friend gets high and then acts like he is, he is spiritually uplifted uh, because you know he's he's thinks that his mind is elevated is that a type you know because he, he said you said whatever works for you now is is that some some sort of no way see, this is just like, to clear it up because you know this is like stealing money and going and giving it to the robin poor. hood robin hood trying to justify uh the means Right? The with the end. ends yeah because I, I get a spiritual upliftment i want to do drugs i want to get intoxicated this is not right this is not right we have a principle there's a hadith mm -hmm. La min yusa. perfect you cannot obey allah by disobeying him mm -hmm. obey him the way he wants yes allah says come connect with me through salah -salam i don't know why we take our salah lightly some say, say, you teach me something more than salah. I already pray. Oh, but do you know what prayer means? The hadith says, as salam al-mu'min. You're yeah. not doing it right. Yeah. That's why it's not doing anything for you. Mm -hmm. If you do it right with full concentration and you think about it and you block out everything else. You know, in, in salah, why do we do this? Why do we put our hands behind our backs or behind our heads when we say Allahu Akbar? Meaning that Everything is behind me. And now all I see, all I face is Allah Azza wa We're not doing our salah properly. Mm -hmm. That's why we're looking for, for other means. For other options. To become, yeah. for other options. Yeah. Islam has given us everything. Yeah. I go back to what I said in the beginning. Spirituality comes by following the risale of our maraja. Do the things that they've said to do. Avoid doing the things that they said not to do. That's spirituality. By doing them, by implementing them, but by concentration as well, mm -hmm. not just physically. Yes. Now we'll get to that stage. Yeah. We don't need to look for anything else. This is mm -hmm. ridiculous. 
Yeah. To say that I can attain spirituality through getting higher. Yeah. Maybe you can, mm -hmm. but Allah doesn't want that. No, no. Th this person is saying just to clear up this because my friend is convinced with it. So right. You know, he he wants to clear that up. Right. Asking um, for a friend. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Um, the last question is that um, my brother wants to buy a very expensive car and I tell him instead of doing that why don't you donate the money to orphans uh, so there's probably a conflict between the two um, the brother wants to buy an expensive car the sister says no or the brother I don't know who uh, says donate to the orphans and buy a regular car is that okay or can you just buy it? whatever there is it's not haram to buy an expensive car person you could do whatever you want with your money. Of course, in a halal way. You can't spend it on alcohol or pork. Yeah. That's what I mean. You could buy No, but in this case, want. it's a car. Yeah. He could legally, I mean, Islamically, he could buy something expensive and not give it to the poor. But does that make him feel good? Buying something that he doesn't really need? If he needs a $30,000 car, for example, a good car, with a good engine, a good AC, four-wheel drive, I don't know. It does the job. Yeah. Why spend $60,000? Why mm -hmm. spend $100,000? That's basically, it'll be going to waste. You could if you want. I don't think it's going to waste, but... You could if you want. But won't you be forming an attachment with that car? Definitely. If it gets a scratch, oh. aren't you going to flip? The more you spend on that car, the more you create an attachment. Yeah. But if you, if you bought a, a regular car, a thirty thousand, a forty thousand dollar car, you don't form that attachment. The world doesn't go upside down if you got in a car accident or it got a dent, or you know uh, the the paint wasn't that perfect mm -hmm. or it gets scratched. Or, you know, just to end our discussion today was was. Uh, amazing to talk about this uh, speaking of you know expensive cars one time we were in downtown Toronto and there was a car pulling up uh, pulling out of a, a parking lot uh, an underground parking lot and it was a Ferrari it was it, it, exotic cars they're, they're low so the person legit had to stop the whole lane to put r uh, small ramps going up out of the garage stopped everyone so he can do that it was around like 30 minutes we were stopped in, in, in the traffic just this person can get, get out of uh, the, the parking lot so his car doesn't get scraped on, on, silly. on the asphalt, That's on silly. the sidewalk. So you know what I mean? Like, the, I, I, I know what you mean, you know, but sometimes uh, life does require you to buy expensive stuff. Thank you very much, Saida, for joining us tonight. Hopefully we can continue uh, the discussion but on a different topic tomorrow. Inshallah. Thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum. Respect the viewers, thank you very much for tuning in. You know, hopefully we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, to aid us to attain spirituality uh, through the right means, of course, uh, and to obey Him at all times. Thank you very much for tuning in. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.